this is the um, equation that we're working with, okay? It's already been factorized for you, so let's start to read things off. The first thing I'm looking for are the intercepts, right? So when you have a look, the first one, like that x at the front, means that I can put in x equals zero. That'll be one of the x-intercepts, right? From this next one over here, I'm getting the opposite. x equals negative three will also be an intercept. And the last one is, what number do I put into here? It's that last set of brackets. What number do I put in to make that last set of brackets zero? It'll be um, five or two, or two and a half, right? So two and a half uh, whoops, is my last x-intercept. Fantastic, done. Now, to find a y-intercept, remember I said, let x equal zero. Let x equal zero, okay? Hold on. I've already, I've already worked out, if x equals 0, the whole thing is 0, right? So as soon as you see x equals 0 is an x-intercept, that's also a y-intercept, right? y equals 0, also oh, uh, an intercept there. So I've kind of done, that's the origin, right? 0, 0. Okay, intercepts are out of the way. Now I want to figure out what's happening at the edges of the graph, right? Because I know 0, uh, minus 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, two and a half. I know that that's what's happening in like the middle of the graph, but what's happening at the edges, okay? Now, if you have a look at this, I'll do an extra step, which I didn't say you had to do, but it will actually help all of us, okay? If you take this guy and you expand him, right? Do you remember I said the most important term is the big term, the leading term, the one with the, um, the, one with the biggest power on it, the degree, do you remember that? Okay. So when I expand this, I'm actually not going to worry about most of the terms. I just want the leading term, okay? What's the power of this going to be? Which, which, what's the degree of this graph? It's three. They're, they're cubics that we're looking at, right? So therefore, in order to get a cubic out of this expansion, I mean, I don't have to do every single term by every single term. For instance, I don't have to do x times three times negative five. I don't need to worry about that because that doesn't have three x's in it. There's only one term that will have three x's in it. It'll be this one times this one times this one. Notice that? So if I just multiply those guys, if I'm just interested in those guys, right? If I combine them, I get an x cubed, obviously, but what's the coefficient at the front of that x cubed? What number gets attached to it? There's a negative a 1 and a 2. So when you multiply them all together, you get negative 2. Okay. Now, when you start to put in, like, let me put in a huge positive number for x, right? This guy, the x cubed, he gets huge and positive. But then there's a minus sign out the front. Do you see that? Right. So this is a formal way of writing. I didn't tell you about it before because you don't need the formal way of writing. But you can write it as well if you like. When x is getting to a really big, you know, positive infinity, right, huge numbers. What's y doing? Well, it's getting really, really negative. Do you see that? Like, x is huge, but minus 2 times x cubed is really negative huge, okay? Um, it doesn't take too much thought to see. When you do the opposite, the opposite thing will happen, okay? So that means that off on the left-hand side, I'm coming from up here. I'm coming from a positive infinity when I'm coming from the left-hand side. That's the left. Right? Negative infinity. Whereas when x is positive infinity, that's at the right. And it's going down. It's dropping like a rock. Okay? So I'm starting from up here and I'm going to end down there. Okay? And that idea that it comes from the leading coefficient, that minus 2. Right? That's actually quite important. Alright, I'm ready to join the dots now. Does yours look something like this? Starts from the top, comes down, whips through that intercept, and down again. That's it. Okay. Now, let me make one last note before we move on to this um, last item here. Um, you might notice that the graph, these cubic graphs, right, they turn around a couple of times, right? You see it's, it's coming down, and then it turns around, it comes back up, and then it turns around again, it goes back down, okay? Because these are points where the graph turns around, or very originally, mathematicians call these turning points, okay? Now, you don't need to know what the, they're called, right? But I just want to point out where are these turning points, okay? Like, I've got this one here and here. How do I know where they are? And the short answer is, I don't. I mean, I know roughly where they're going to be. Like, obviously, it's got to be between minus 3 and 0, and it's got to be between 0 and 2 and a half. But, like, up and down, I don't know where it is. Um, this guy over here, is he to the left? 
Or is he to the right? Should I have drawn it like more like this? So the turning point is over there. Now, the short answer is, at the moment, I don't know. At the moment, I don't know. Just like, you know, in the past, if you got given um, this graph here, right, the equation of this graph, and I asked you to graph it, you'd say, I don't know, okay? Next year, when you learn calculus, uh, when you're in two unit, we learn the tools for finding where these things are called, where these, where these turning points, where they're located, okay? But at the moment, you can draw them anywhere because you don't have access to the tools that can locate them.